Welcome back. Now that we know the components of bone tissue, let's get into how it's organized. And by the end of this, I'd like you to be able to distinguish the periosteum and endosteum, describe the organization of bone tissue, describe the location of osteocytes within bone tissue, describe the location of blood cell production, and describe the major pathways of neural vasculature within a bone. Well, remember that every bone has a layer of dense, compact bone that surrounds inner spongy bone. So in long bones, we find that the spongy bone surrounds the hollow medullary cavity, as we saw before. Another important thing to note here in this organization is that there are connective tissue structures directly related to bone. On the outside, we have what is called the periosteum. And this is most closely associated with the compact bone versus the inside here is called the endosteum and that's most closely associated with the spongy bone. So the entirety of a bone is covered in periosteum except for the articular surfaces of bones. And we'll get back to that when we talk about the development of bones. Let's take a closer look at the proximal end of this femur here. Spongy bone is found in the ends of bones and lining the medullary cavity. So while this organization of spongy bone looks erratic, it's actually very well organized along lines of stress and areas of compression. In contrast, the compact bone, which is found on the outside of bones, is very regularly organized longitudinally. So we can imagine a very large osteon in the shaft of the bone, in that compact bone, and if we take a cross section of it, like we've done here, we would look at an osteon like this in the upper right. So while I'll continue to use the terms spongy and compact, these types of bones have other names that describe the exact same thing. And you may come across these in the future, like trabecular and cancellous for spongy bone and cortical or dense bone for compact. In diagrammatic form, we can see that both trabeculae and osteons are made up of lamellae or layers or these circular plates of bone. Now embedded between these layers, we find those osteocytes and those are the mature cells that maintain daily metabolism. So the layers or the tree rings that make up an osteon are called concentric lamellae. These are concentric circles that lead toward the center area there where the neurovasculature sits. And as we've seen, the structure of bone really optimizes its tensile strength. So here on the left, we see that the collagen fibers are actually in alternating directions for each concentric lamellae allowing for more strength in different directions. Next, the spaces between osteons, like this one here, are filled with what is called interstitial lamellae. And these are made up of broken down osteons, and they are evidence that bone is constantly remodeling itself, and we'll have a whole video on that coming up. So lastly, there are plates of bone that completely encircle the internal and the external circumference, and these are called circumferential lamellae. The blood supply to a bone comes from branches of arteries that supply the surrounding muscles and joints. Now bones will receive a rich blood supply with extensive communication between its many sources. Here I'm going to use the term vasculature to represent arteries and veins together. Now one or more large nutrient artery will often enter the bone at the diaphysis like we can see here. The nutrient artery will then split into branches that ascend 
and descend, supplying the internal surfaces of the bone. Now, if we zoom in on the diaphysis, we'll see the branches of the nutrient vasculature within the medullary cavity here. Other branches to the bone will remain superficial and supply more of the external surfaces of bones, like we can see here with the periosteal vasculature that runs right within the periosteum. So each individual osteon is supplied by capillaries within its central canal. Then what we also see is running perpendicular to the bone are these communicating branches, and these run through inter- osteonic canals. So you can remember these will communicate between osteons and they connect the many sources of blood. Now in terms of the innervation of bone, sensory nerves do reach all aspects of bone just by following the blood vessels. Interestingly though, only the periosteum receives any somatic sensory innervation. Remember, this is the type that's more localized. So if someone has a broken bone, any pain they feel is related to damage to the periosteum rather than the bone itself. Now the visceral sensory fibers that course throughout the bone aid in the regulation of bone homeostasis and growth. Red and yellow bone marrow are found within open spaces in a bone, and therefore they have a close relationship with the vasculature to that bone. The function of red bone marrow is to produce new red and white blood cells and filter out old ones. The yellow bone marrow acts in more of a supportive role of the vasculature and a storage role of triglycerides, and this is true especially within the medullary cavity like we can see here. Now we've made it to our question, so here I'd like you to consider the following. Where are osteocytes located? Choose all parts of a bone that apply. So pause here so you can write out notes and what you remember about each of those structures. Now when you're ready, let's go through each option. The first is between concentric lamellae. So where are concentric lamellae located? Well remember, these are the plates of bone that form an osteon, and in between each we'll find osteocytes. So this is one correct answer. We will find osteocytes between concentric lamellae. The next option is red bone marrow. We'll find this mostly in areas of spongy bone, like the ends of bones. So do we find osteocytes in red bone marrow? No, we find stem cells that form blood cells, but not mature bone cells that maintain daily metabolism. Next is the yellow bone marrow. Do we find osteocytes there? Again, no, we'll find fat cells in storage there, but not bone cells. The final two options are compact and spongy bone. So where do we find each? Compact bone forms sort of that outer shell of a bone, or the cortex, and the spongy bone will be found lining this medullary cavity and within the ends of bones. Now, do these tissues contain osteocytes? The answer is yes, both are bone tissue, so both contain osteocytes that maintain that daily metabolism of bone. Thank you so much for your attention here, and I'll see you in the next one.